Hey, what is up everybody? This is Jason with devslopes.com and in this video, we are going to finish the last piece to our landing page. So this is what everything looks like now, all right? Looking pretty smooth. Now, the only thing we wanna do is take care of this section down here. And damn, this is what we want it to look like. So let's go ahead and hop to it. So in our index file, if we scroll down to the very bottom, um, we'll see that I have added a footer here. And would you look at that, I gave it an ID of page footer. So we can actually use an ID in our layouts folder. So that'll be fun. And then we've got this, uh, I put Lego footer, and then footer container, we have a footer wrapper, and then footer links right in here. So we can really nest things and get specific with our elements. So over here in our layouts, what we're gonna do is create a footer partial. Now I thought about, because we have this uh, kind of like footer container, I thought about taking it and putting it in the container section, um, but when I looked at this, I was like, you know what, there is a lot more happening inside of our footer, and it's going to be better to use a hierarchy and nest these things. So I decided it's going to be better if we actually just create a partial for that. So in the layer, uh, parent directory, go ahead, create a file, and this is going to be footer. Okay. Awesome. And then in here, we are going to use our fancy ID. And don't forget to import this. All right, so now we've got everything working and communicating. So what we want to do here is first we're going to go ahead and grab our ID. And we named this uh, page footer. Page footer. All right, and then we're going to add some style properties here. So we've been using some floats uh, throughout our page. And with this container, uh, because we're going to be using some floats, we just want to make sure we don't inherit any of those. So I'm going to do a uh, clear and then set it to both. And then we're going to add our background color to it. And if you remember, this is the nice uh, dark background that we've been uh, using elsewhere. So I'm going to use the base dark. And then we're going to add some padding. And let's do 25 pixels from the top, 0 right and left, and 40 uh, from the bottom. All right, so that'll give our uh, footer uh, some space to put content into now. Give our content some space from the center of it to the uh, edges, top and bottom. And I'm going to give this a position of relative just to help this thing stay put so it's not floating around on us. And give it a width of 100% so that we make sure it always takes up the entire viewport. And then the last thing we're going to do is do an overflow of hidden. Uh, this way we don't get any weird crazy things uh, scrolling off of the screen uh, just in case. Alright, so we've got that and I'm going to take the ID, add those style properties and then leave it. And then now I'm going to dive into the footer container and we're going to start nesting our elements from there. So go ahead and let me make sure, yeah, we're on the outside. Go ahead and add, uh, grab the footer container. And then inside of here, we want to add some uh, padding that is zero from the top and bottom. But we're going to give this, uh, we're going to do something different and just do 10% from the right or left. That way it just uh, kind of flexes with us if the uh, viewport changes sizes. And then our next one is going to be our Lego footer. And I named it Lego because I was thinking of Legos um, because they're cool. <laughs> so yeah, I got a little crea creative there. All right, so the font size, um, let's use our base font or font base. Font base, shoot, I'm questioning myself now. Is it font base? It wasn't uh, giving me any options here. Yeah, font base. Okay, fantastic. I am not nuts. Not completely. And then we're going to do a font weight. And let's do 200 here. Okay, these are just going to be uh, everything inside of this. We want the font weight to be just nice, simple, and thin. And then we're going to add a color to this. <clears throat> and let's do our... 
uh, base light. Okay, we've got that dark background and we want a lighter color uh, to display for us. And then we've got our footer wrapper. Um, so let's grab that class. And then inside of here, let's see, what kind of things do we want to do with it? Um, we're going to, so the footer wrapper is everything that contains the links. So what we want to do with this wrapper is the content that goes inside of it, these list items, because they're list items, usually they stack top to bottom. We're going to put a display of inline block on this so it gives it a block element and stacks it left to right. And then let's add some uh, padding to the bottom of this thing so it's not freaking snaking the uh, bottom of our display. And then we can actually combine this into one because I actually want to do padding on the top and the bottom. And we'll just add a zero at the end so we don't add anything to the left and right. And then we're going to give this a uh, flex wrap. Let's see, flex wrap of wrap. All right, so that way if the content needs to, it can just uh, wrap if the viewport shrinks. And then we're going to make sure that we get the sweet cursor pointer uh, on all of the content in here. Now we get to start diving in and designing out some of these footer links. All right, looking good. So the last thing we want to do is just grab those footer links. And I'm not going to nest uh, these in here um, just because I want to make it more independent of itself just for fun to show that you don't always have to nest things and we can still apply classes to them. So we're going to give this a margin right of 36 pixels. And then let's give this a color of the uh, base light. So we've got base light. And what I'm doing in here, you may think that I'm being redundant. I said everything in this uh, footer, I already want the color to be a base light. Uh, but these specific footer links, I'm setting to a base light. That's because if in the future, right now, the only thing that I have in this footer are these links. What if in the future there was additional information added to that? I could easily come into the uh, Lego footer here and change the color to anything I want. So any other additional text, maybe phone numbers or addresses, uh, could be changed on the fly uh, by simply changing this one variable. But then we could keep all of our links the same color. Or we could do vice versa. And then we want to make sure that the, uh, uh, we don't have those underlines. So we're going to do a text decoration of none. And then we want to add that sweet hover. And when we hover, we want uh, the color of this to turn red. OK? So that is looking uh, pretty fly. And we've already got red colors. Why am I doing this kind of a red? Let's do our uh, brand primary, which is red. All right, let's go ahead and check this out in the browser now and see what it looks like. So go ahead and hit a refresh on your page. And it's almost there. We've got the background, the padding. Our links are highlighting. Um, but it's not being pushed over. And let's see our terminal. Everything's compiling fine, just fine in the terminal. So let's, um, let's breadcrumb this and see what's happening here. All right, so we know that we have the background here and the uh, padding. We have the width, the overflow. Um, we've got our padding here. We've got our font base and everything that's going on. The wrapper, the footer links are highlighting. But I don't think it's actually getting the padding it needs right here. Look at this typo. Con at tenor. Con at tenor. We have a con at tenor container. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, because this is the thing that wasn't working. Because we said top and bottom, zero, but left and right, 10%. All right, so now let's go to the browser and refresh and see. <laughs> it works. I love it. So we built this really cool uh, footer with some uh, highlighting links here. And let's just do a recap of everything that we just accomplished. So we built this really cool looking uh, landing page. And then on top of that, we have completely built out this entire list of reusable variables. Okay, We set a lot of uh, base defaults with uh, colors, with fonts, font sizes, buttons, loads of things. And then on top of that, 
we made one of the coolest mixins. I mean, something that is so insanely reusable. And we also created a really simple extend that we have been able to use a couple of times in our webpage here. So good stuff. Um, congratulations. That is a wrap for this lesson. Good job. And let's move on. And there's a bug. Yo. Let's move on. Thank you.